I want to make you question everything you believe. Have you all noticed that technology has shifted the way that humans interact with each other? Have we all noticed this shift? Yeah? Number one, we're developing something called digital amnesia. What that means is we're retaining less information because we don't have to retain as much information. It's right here at our fingertips. And so oftentimes what's interesting is people think that you're not paying attention because you're on your device, but oftentimes you're taking notes or putting something in there that will help you remember pertinent information. I remember speaking at an event a few years ago and it was all HR folks. And it was at the end of the day, I was in Houston, I was like the evening speaker. And so I was coming later in the day and I office there. But during the day, while I was doing my work, I was on Twitter interacting with the attendees before I got there later in the day. And there was one attendee in particular I was tweeting with the whole day. And she was taking great notes. So at the end of my own session about technology, especially when it came to training and human resources, there was one woman who raised her hand to ask a question. And she said, well, all this technology stuff is good and well, but what about these young people that don't know how to pay attention anymore? She said, how about her? She's been on her, her little device the whole time you've been talking. And this young woman who was sitting next to her looked up, like, I know you didn't, right? Like, just totally. <laughs> she had a little notebook and she's like, and then she flipped it around. She is the one who had been tweeting notes for the entire conference. Literally, and she was doing with a hashtag so that her peers back at the office could get the main points. Now, it wasn't my job to make the other crabby lady feel bad, so I didn't do that. What I said was this just goes to show you that the way people learn now is different. The way people retain information now is different because now humans are dealing with internal and external brains at all times. <laughs> Big data allows organizations to make strategic decisions based on actual information. Does that make sense to everybody in here? That's all it is. It's just a whole bunch of information that can be used in some pretty cool ways. Big data is driving the conversation when it comes to technology because all this social media, all these smartphones are all contributing things to big data. Walmart is a great example of this. We talk about leveraging data. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but Walmart was probably one of the first corporations to leverage big data and data science. Walmart wanted to figure out before a big hurricane was coming in Florida, what was it people flocked to buy at the grocery store to save their family? So what things did they see the largest percentage increase in? So not just strictly numbers, but saw the highest percentage increase. They hired some data scientists, they looked at the data from the stores all over Florida for a five-year period, and they crossed that information, and they found out what one item saw the largest percentage increase. And so most of you in here would think that when they sat down for the meeting, they said, okay, data scientists, what do we need to stock up on? Most of you would probably think bottled water, toilet paper, canned goods. Some of you might think beer, depending on how funny your family is, right? And you'd all be close. But there's obviously one thing that is more important to people whose lives are at stake. There's one thing that they're buying more than any of those other things in terms of a larger increase than what they normally buy. Not water, not batteries, not toilet paper. The one thing that's more important than all of these things, strawberry Pop-Tarts. <laughs> How many of you in this room know people that you think might be addicted to their mobile phone? Do you have a friend? Not us. That we think might be addicted, right? How many of us in here think we might be addicted to our mobile devices? Raise your hands. Okay. All right. So I'm looking around, and some of you are like, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I'm going to help you figure out right now if you're addicted to your mobile device. Are you ready? With one question, we're going to answer this. 
How many of you in here sleep with your smartphones? <laughs> People all around the room said, what does she mean? In the bed, by the bed, on the floor? <laughs> So predictable. <laughs> the next way it's changing is we're developing these compulsory behaviors. The average American, about 75% of us, slightly more, the first thing we do when we wake up is check our mobile devices. What that means is we greet our mobile devices before we greet our mates. And so it's shifting us in some pretty remarkable ways. And we're attached to all of these to the point where we are those cyborgs that the 1980s movies warned us about. It's us. <laughs> Honolulu passed a law last year that made it illegal for pedestrians to look at their smartphones as they're crossing the street. Why? Because people are getting hit by cars. There's a gentleman, true story in California, that almost ran into a bear on the sidewalk because he was too busy texting. But I want to be very clear. A cyborg is a human that is fitted with technology to give them additional abilities. You're a cyborg, not an android, which is a robot that imitates a human. Very different. And by definition, you're becoming that because we are becoming fitted with, we are mating with our devices. Not that, some of you were looking at me crazy, not that definition, there's two, there's two definitions of mating people. The second definition, which means to be fitted with, okay? So, so using tools like GPS-enabled augmented reality, they're encouraging kids to get into STEM programs, and so they take them to places like the Grand Canyon. They can hold up their phone, and they can see the different layers of rocks as they appear. Additionally, they're using the same type of technology to explain math concepts to kids that are hard of hearing or deaf as well. Physics labs all over the country in high schools are being built for fractions, pennies on the dollar, because kids are using their smartphones as sensors. Many of us in here have used our smartphones to learn new languages, to learn new facts. And so it's impacting us in some pretty positive ways as well. All we have to do is shift other people's minds and suddenly something else becomes possible. Something else becomes real. But the point of that exercise was just to showcase how dependent we are on technology now in ways that we never even thought of. It's integrated into every single thing that we do. All of the things that we used to need different pieces of technology for easily fit into our phones now, right? But here's the thing, it's all about balance because I think at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that we're using the technology and the technology isn't using us. Because I'm sure everyone in here has been to some type of family or friend get together where there's someone who could not get out of their device. Who's ever had that experience where there's somebody the whole time? I know there was truly a time for me where I finally just had to say, look, Grandma, I know you like Facebook, but I'm gonna need you to pay attention. We're about to cut the turkey, okay?